Disc golf is for everyone. The young, the old, the meek, and the strong. Though the world is welcome, only one can rise above the all. Welcome to round two coverage of the 2023 Professional World Championship presented by L.L. Bean. We're in Jeffersonville, Vermont at Smuggler's Notch Resort on some of the best courses in the world. And you're watching Joma's Pro with Nate Sexton, Jeremy Bowling, and Paul Ulevar. I would agree, Nate. I think as far as uh, a, a disc golf complex, it doesn't get any finer than Smuggler's Notch. You have the wooded course of Brewster Ridge and you have Fox Run Meadows, the big bomber course with OB hills, water, you name it, it offers it. Ranked seven in the world. Uh, I mean, this place is great. And I just wanted to say, we loved our first round feature card. We loved covering the last player who won the world championships here. The player who's won six world titles, the player who's won two world titles and another two-time major champion. We said, you know what, let's just cover them again. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have the same exact card as round one, but just on the other side of the road. All like that. five rounds, these dudes. Let's <laughs> see what they can do. <laughs> Macbeth didn't miss a putt in the circle. He just found himself outside deep C2 way too many times in round one, still managed to put together an okay round. No one really shot lights out over there at Brewster, but with the conditions that they battled, I feel like they all kind of fought through pretty decent. Chris Dickerson battled a double bogey and still missing putts in the circle, managed to shoot another decent round. Five under is his starting score. And Greg Barsby, I think he shot the four under, which is a couple of small errors, but was really close to shooting one of those really nice seven unders. But right now they are all chasing Chris Dickerson. I mean, I'm sorry, excuse me, Chris Clemens. Chris Dickerson is chasing Chris Clemens. But Chris Clemens shot a 12 under round one, leading the way at the world championships. And I wonder if all these delays and the the same groups thing maybe pay, plays into Chris Clemens' hand just a little bit. One more round to kind of potentially avoid that lead card pressure. Not yeah. to say that Interesting. he would fold by any sense. I'm not trying to disrespect him in any way, but I'm just saying an opportunity to sort of anonymously play with a two-shot lead. Interesting. Oh, I'm, so they kept the order the same. In, in my group, they switched the order up based on score from the round one. Same with mine. Hmm, they kept mine the same. Well, maybe we we're going to have to start over. This uh, isn't start fair. Start the whole tournament over, folks. This isn't fair. Good shot from Greg. New tee pad here on hole one that's about 20 to 25 feet right of the old tee. Why do you think they did that? Um, I think it makes it harder. I, I actually think the opposite. I think it makes it easier, but maybe that's because of it makes it easier for the forehand. Maybe it's harder for the backhand. I think it's harder for the backhand because you can't just throw stable out at the OB and let mm -hmm. it slide down the fairway, which I, okay. I know I know you're a sidearm player. There's not a lot of you. Yeah. And I think <laughs> more predominantly uh, we got those backhand players who like to play that stable shot. Two-time world champion representing Dynamic Discs. Can we hear it for Ricky Wysocki? I got credited on the tee this morning as being the captain of Team Discraft. So news to you. Wow. But, uh, I wear two hats now. Wow. It's a big score for Team Discraft. They lied to me then. <laughs> 
amazing card from Gray, Tennessee. He's a former GMC champion, representing Discraft. We love Discraft. Let's give it up for Chris Dickerson. The, the announcer's name is Chris as well. And he, he has very animated things to say about each and every card, and you got to love that. He really has a lot of passion for the sport. As long as this doesn't hyzer much, yeah, that's got very little energy. That's where you want to be, right by the white tree in the middle. Yeah, I think that's a smart play, throwing something a little slower, not pushing it towards the out-of-bounds, not giving it a chance to have that skip to the left. The aggressive play is playing it through those trees. You can catch um, kicks off of the Guardians, the left and right. All these players that are on the left to middle side of the fairway are in a great spot. I think Ricky's going to have the tr trickiest approach being on that right side as Macbeth leaves that one short right at the edge of the circle. little knee knocker to start the second round. And trickiest is still yeah. pretty easy. It, yeah, it pretty would, easy. It would seem from here. That's not going to be too much trouble for Rick, and that's no surprise. Hole one is not the most difficult hole out here. It's a short four. So if you are inbounds, you're thinking birdie. I'm actually pretty shocked to see the scoring average as high as it is, 3.89 is closer to par than I thought. I thought it would be in the 3.6 to 3.7 range, well, I think but with nearly 3.9. With that tee pad change, I think the wind was playing a big factor, yeah. being a right to left wind, pushing everybody towards that left side out of bounds. Bars be just a bit long on his approach, just inside 20 feet. Everyone putting for birdie. And that was in the center with pace. That's a great way to start your round. Circle's edge. Nice, confident stroke. And you can see the OB right behind the basket there. That had a lot of pace, and that's uh, on high ground for Macbeth putting downhill. If he misses that putt, it's most assuredly going out of bounds unless it hits heavy metal. But both Ricky and Macbeth able to capture the birdies as well as Barsby. Barsby has been known to like some heavy metal himself. That was a good one. Great start for our card. Yeah, it is. Great start for you. Got to do something now that I'm not the captain anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Pace has been set. And the scores are, this is going to be a very interesting round with our scoring method because like you mentioned before, Nate, and maybe you want to go into it a little bit more, but we are playing with the same groups and also at the same exact tee time from the day before. So there is no consistency from what we normally have as far as the best players being out there at a certain time. They're, yeah, Isaac Robinson, for example, I think is off on the earliest tee time. I think he came in with a nine under. You'd expect to be playing in the late afternoon with a score like that, potentially yep. even on the lead card. But since we don't really have a lead card, thanks to all the delays and them just sticking with the same groupings, he's been done for hours at this point when these guys step to the first hole for their 3.30 PMT or whatever it was. Barsby made that look so easy. Beautiful pace, perfect angle, and he is parked for the birdie. We also saw... Beth, this is low. Can it get the skip? Yeah, yep. really good shot. We saw Raven Newsom on the top of that leaderboard as well, and he's one of the ones that's coming from the B pool. Yes. Great start to his tournament. Wow, these guys are making this hole look pretty easy so far. I don't think that, this hole isn't that easy. No. I mean, it's it's uh, it's right in front of you. It's 250, but the gap is narrow. This bush on the right kind of can be tricky. Go in. Whoa, good shot from Chris. Have we sit? I don't think we've ever seen an ace here in hole two. The ceiling's kind of low, and it, it, it pushes that OB long if you were to give it enough energy to go in. And I believe it was a tall basket many of the years yes. we've played here. So Correct. that makes it even a little crazier to be up at that height to try to pick up an ace. This this would be the year to I do it. I could see it happening. I don't want to be anywhere near chain high coming by this bad boy. And Chris is chain high as his putt comes in for the birdie. Great stroke there. 
The format for this event will be five rounds. Three of those rounds will be on this course here at Fox Run Meadows. I think putting circles edge this round is going to be very, very important, especially since the wind's going to be very swirly out and predominant. It's not going to be a lot of lulls in the wind. And so making sure that you can hit those circles edge putts is going to be... It's certainly not anywhere close to the windiest rounds as we see three birdies and one par for Macbeth. Not the windiest round, but maybe one of the swirliest. There was absolutely zero consistency in the wind's direction, it felt like. From time to time, you could be walking in a headwind and all of a sudden you had a tailwind just a few moments later. So that will be certainly a factor in the round. Which is so frustrating, especially with all the OB everywhere on this course. I mean, there's on this whole uh, 300 feet, but mandatory left. It, even if you beat the mandatory, a bad kick can shoot you straight into the out of bounds there on the right. Just the tightest hole you could possibly imagine. If you hit it with speed, which is what a lot of people like to do on tight gaps, you can go deep as well into some out of bounds. So speed control is a must. Oh, Ooh, no. Barsby pulls that one right, misses the mandatory, and wow! after the birdie-birdie start, it will be bogey best-case scenario. And Ricky pulling it off to the right, and that is fortunate to not miss the mandatory. I think the right-to-left wind right here is, is very tricky for the backhand. And, uh, well, actually, it's switched for this group left <laughs> to right. Sorry, there you go. pardon me. But then, then I would feel like it'd be almost a helping wind for the backhand. That's going to leak off to the left side, and if it had any more pace, it could have been in danger of standing up and rolling OB long. But now it's just going to be a heavily obstructed birdie look. I would take that every time on this hole where Chris just landed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Especially now with the addition of that mandatory. Mm -hmm. This hole is getting more teeth. I mean, this is not a friendly oh, drop zone this either. is, oh my gosh, this is so tough. Only about 50 feet up from the tee pad. You still have a lot of work, and it's heading towards OB potentially. Looks like he does say stay safe, but he's way back. That is a very difficult drop zone to get up and down from. And Ricky needs to slow down, and that's going to push to the back edge of the circle. That is just such a tough spot that yes. he was in right there. To get to where he, he ended up was a, was a great shot from Ricky. That right there is perfect touch from Macbeth. Angle control and pace on point. Kind of like that mullet. The angle control is <laughs> definitely on point. Shout out to Jeff Corns for letting that thing grow out to what it, where it's at now. It's just amazing. Here is that long stretch left for Chris. I, I take it back. I, I don't think I'd want to be here every time. <laughs> <laughs> Chris right. Dickerson. He wants to be there. I'll, I'll be there every time if I can have him as my doubles partner. Yeah. And I'll take it. Yeah, he'll get you out of there. And great start for Chris. Ricky oh, left side low par save from the knee. Yeah, those are the those are putts that you look back at the end of the tournament and might be a little moment there. Yeah, little tricky par save. How many of those did you collect for the tournament? Mm -hmm. To where it wasn't your best stroke, but it yeah. kind of sneaks in there. Yep. Those usually add up to, especially at Worlds, when you get that extra round, that fifth round. I mean, that's when. You know, the difference between 10 to 15 strokes is just made up from those little breaks that go one way or the other. A good kick, a bad kick, could be the difference between a podium finish or 30th place. I mean, he was close to missing the Mando, just like Greg, and that's a big different story right there.
Hole four, short par four at 630, but this area has grown in quite a lot. Most players are going with Anheuser release on the fairway driver uh, with a backhand. If you're a right-hander trying to swing it out right over the top of those bushes and then swing back left, ideally missing that bush that we have marked there at 240 feet from the pin. That's really the only bad spot you can find. If you're inbounds, you're probably looking pretty good for generating a birdie putt. Yeah, Anheuser out of the hand to hit that gap a little easier and then let it flex That's out to perfect. the middle. Yeah, I it's, think that is. It's everything he's looking to do. I mean, he could get a little bit more aggressive with more distance, I suppose, but that's going to put him in the spot that I'm sure he's practiced every round from. You got to be you got to be careful because it, the more distance you get, there is a bush over there on the right hand. This is not going to work. Yeah. This might be this safe might yeah, on the this other side. No this way. is going to at least cross. I think. He is Whoa. safe. Wow. He is safe on the landing. How often? You might not see it because you haven't been here many times in the last few years, Nate, but I feel like we've seen that a lot. Really? Yeah, and not one time intentionally. This That's is a certified shank, I mean, to be over there. Oh, yeah. That's a great shot. There. Paul is oh. pushing that left side OB line, and he ends up just putting the brakes in time. But really a perfect, perfect shot. Because from there he can go sidearm or backhand into the pin, whatever he would he would like. Sure. I think we've even seen Greg go forehand down the middle to get back into the large this island. This is Donzo, I think. Yeah, that's pushing. Oh. oh. No, that's fine. But there, then he's going to have that bush in the way, see? Potentially. Yeah, that, that might be like a flex forehand around the bush. Big backhand highs are available to him as well if he yeah. wants it, though it's kind of risky. How did Ricky do that? <laughs> that's crazy. And he's closer than Chris. Yeah, Chris is probably in that 330 range. Good forehand here. Oh, oh my gosh, man. hit the base. L.L. Bean, take that. What a shot. Some good advertisement for you. Yeah. And we were just talking about breaks. If he can birdie this one after the great save on the last hole, he's I gonna. think he will. Yeah, he's like get you're it looking done. at three shots right there that could have gone completely different. Absolutely. The scorecard does not tell the story. Yeah, I've always said in the last few years, there's no pictures on the scorecard, but now we do have a We have a video. Yeah, we have yeah, camera we crew have out that. there. So Greg does go minor flex, just kind of flat hyzer actually, and they're all near the rock circle. There's something special about getting on that little tiny island. It just feels I'm usually tapping in a par from up there. I and I don't want to say anything. I don't want to, I don't want to do commentator jinx here, but I've seen so many short putts miss on this hole. That little bit of extra elevation, you're also very exposed to a lot of different swirly wind conditions up here on the screen. I don't know what it is about the screen, but it's got a weird thing. So getting up on those rocks, I think, just helps out just that much more. Another star frame from our card here. Not the hardest hole you'll ever play, but it's a nice birdie to pick up. It's yeah, a tricky one. It's on the harder half. It's the seventh most difficult, coming out just below par at a 3.98 average. So that tells you it's going to be a pretty good spread. Mostly birdies, more birdies than anything else, but a good spread between bogeys and pars. Cannon Burr, 10 under through 15. Storming out there. Hole five, par three, 455 downhill. One of the tougher par threes on the course as you've just got that small gap to work with and you have the pond waiting for you if you get a little too much height under the disc you can go power hyzer up high if you have enough arm for it but i think most players this year are trying to kind of play it a little bit straighter and more inside try to keep it low and let the hill be your friend by the pin there rather than risking air mailing it over the top this is why yeah and this is just instant bogey Instant bogey. I mean, and and it, double bogey comes into play when you do oh, yeah. when you go out of bounds that early, right? Because he is not going to have an easy approach 
I don't know about you guys, but I don't think I've ever taken a par on this hole. Ever. <laughs> Just birds and boats. Like, I, I, I think I might do that play right there. That's not a bad play. To, no, not at all. Like to be the, safe. That's, that's a good miss. Yes. I get pars on this hole when I go out of bounds close to the basket. Yeah. When that's you, when I get pars on it. You beg the spotter. You think you could reach that? Oh, wow. Spikes it on the side. Thanks to all that rain that we've been seeing in Vermont this year. The rainiest year in some time. So there was just a flood in a nearby town, Johnson, just two weeks before this tournament. This, this needs is to be close. quick. Quick. Oh, quick get the, enough. And it fights through and skips. He's actually got a pretty good birdie look. Yeah, that was a scary great reaction. putt, though. On yes, it is. I mean, you can see. I mean, Chris has got. I don't even think he can see the pin from where he's at. Maybe barely. He can go firm with the overstable disc. Yes. That's really nicely done using the hill. Played perfectly. Yeah, you really feel like you got away with something. If you if from his spot you can come out of there with a bogey, honestly, that's what it feels like. Ooh. I think Ricky was just saying, please don't roll. Don't hit the koozie. Don't hit the koozie. Because I don't think at any point he was trying to run that birdie putt. But this guy right here definitely is does hit the koozie but stays put i believe this is outside the circle it looks a lot closer than it is and in for birdie is Macbeth on the hardest hole of the course really yeah three four five average wow wow that's because most of the scores you see are three four or five But there were some sevens, multiple sevens. Wow, sixes and everything. I mean, this this had a wide scoring range from two to seven. All right, those uh, eight unders are looking a little better as they're climbing up that leaderboard. Still four back of the top ten, though. But they, I think, you know, now that they've seen some scores come in and good players are finishing their rounds after good starts, they kind of have a pretty decent idea of what the two round total is going to be somewhat near. Yep. As they're moving to the easiest hole on the course, playing a little bit harder than average. It's 2.34 average this year. Normally it's a little bit lower than that. But this is just a blind sidearm hyzer, 265 feet. Take a fairway driver with a little stability, put it on hyzer high, let it dig. Kind of like that. Ooh, got down in time. That's a little bit more meat on the bone than I think Paul would like. It's a buffalo wing guy, not like a Renaissance fair turkey leg. Mm. Interesting little skip skitter yeah, roll. Yeah. Nice overstable disc. Oh, hurry. Hurry. Oh no. oh, no. You cannot make that mistake here on six. Just per so straight. Didn't get the height under it. Didn't get the hyzer angle. I don't think it was stable enough. Like, this is very overstable. You can see how it, it never thought about going straight. It yeah. was fighting the whole way. Yeah, I mean, you, you there's no real reason to throw anything but pretty dang overstable here, I feel. And that's going to drop short. A bogey coming up for Greg. And that's that's a bogey that hurts more than other bogeys Yeah, in a big, real way. Chris, in for the birdie. You guys want to hear another John Jones story? Please. I, played, I love John Jones play, stories. I played with him. I told you about the big drive he had on hole four in the first round. This hole, windy as all get out. Good putt ball. What does he reach for? The DX Condor. Where does he put it? A foot from the pin. <laughs> Who is this John Jones guy? And how do I become best friends yeah, with him? He threw some interesting shots. I had a good time playing with him for two rounds. DX Condor. Parked. Why would you not? Is I my mean, question. You would. You would. If you could, you would. <laughs> so Chris, Ricky, and Macbeth 
All at nine, Greg going the opposite direction. At Discraft, we don't wait to see what the future holds. We build it. The future is in your hands. Uh, shout out to Marty Greg- Gregoire. He used to work for the PDGA. That's right. I, Media guy. Yeah, back in the day. He used the Condor a lot, and uh, disc fits right into it. Yeah, rock. A DX rock yeah. fits right into a Condor. <laughs> it's, always a nice, say, it's a sneaky way to get two discs in one he'd spot. He'd always tell me, feed it to the Condor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's terrifying. Look at that view of this hole. 1265 you're reading that right how much ob line is there about sixteen thousand feet <laughs> the the question is with the widened fairway as they have shrunken hole eight down to a par three now they have moved the fairway way wider on the left side are players going to be baited into going across the ditch off the tee this, Ricky's going. This guy might. It was a headwind, I think, the majority yes. of the day. So it makes it a little more difficult to commit to this play. This is pushed right, but looks fantastic. And the result is also fantastic. Wow. Over the trees or through the trees. I think that's five good breaks in a row <laughs> for Ricky. It's a little tricky. You know, what exactly that buys you, I guess, is maybe a chance to go all the way into that second bubble, certainly, in two shots, which you maybe are giving that up yeah. if you take this layup shot. So I don't, I don't know if we'll see these guys that play short of the ditch still try to push for birdie. It's possible, but certainly you have to get aggressive somewhere. You don't get 1,265 feet out of in three shots without getting aggressive at some point. At some point, yeah. I, I think I think the play for most people is to just kind of pitch one here, and then you can go full send on this next shot. I mean, you really have a lot of space to go for that second bubble. I think that they're all, like, in a spot where 500 feet isn't a problem for them, and they're going downhill. Like, go ahead and give it a full rip. It's a big bubble. Yeah, that's a good point. I think this Anheuser shot needs oh, to get to the ground. it does. And Chris oh, might have caught a piece. is going to be out of bounds. And not only is he out of bounds, he didn't get much distance. That is going to be, uh, he's going to be 550 to the pin from oh, there. It's, I mean, if bogey, not more. Bogey at best. You see these guys going Anheuser. That is not a great play. Hi, I mean, I don't know how this. This, this is, is going right towards the narrowest yes. area, is it not? Yes. Oh, no, he's getting up in the bubble wow, that's no that's, yeah, that's oh that's great. that's money yeah that's awesome i was worried that we had too much hyzer to push to carry enough but i was worried for no reason you were worried for the wrong person yeah i was imagining i was throwing but paul got it up there with a little power that thing stays safe but that's it's gonna be decision time from decision there time from there i honestly think from about 480 it's playing only about 380 to the mm-hmm. pin. Yeah. And so the distance is about speed control from there. They have the distance to go go after it by all means. It's just what stability, what kind of shot. You can play flex shot, straight hyzer. That was impressive from Rick. He that, pushed yeah. that to within about 20 feet of the line. And I think that's what that big shot gives you. It gives you an easier chance to l- let that third shot be only 300 to the pin. Look at Chris go. What and kind of cross did he get there? Spotters, spotters are thinking about are like, it. Yeah, he always giving it to him. That is a huge decision. I mean, the responsibility of yes. of being in that position could decide a world champion right there. Absolutely, and they gave him the spot, so he'll be able to advance that extra three hundred feet. And it's no decision for Greg. He goes big right away. Oh, and catches the flag. No way, Greg. And, wow, does this save him? I mean, it has a lot of good angle. I don't think it's skipping OB. Could have. But it's it a little, could have. It's an easier putt now. What a wow. shot. Yeah, that was great. And Macbeth, after going big on two, is left with this. We'll call it 360. So, yeah, of course Birdie's in play from the short side. It, uh, well, well, for sure. I don't think these guys were ever thinking I'm playing for Paul right now. Just Ricky played for Birdie in a little bit more aggressive way. This is tough. This is a 
a shot where you can go deeper easily. Oh, see? Ricky pushed it too long. That's a mistake you see very often here. Is even with a Barsby shot, it was coming in a bit hot. It's hard to get that judgment correctly, especially with the swirling winds. Can Chris get that in there wow. to save the bogey? Nice bogey. Wow. Double OB bogey. Four throws. Takes a six. Wow. You can see why people go deep, though, as Ricky okay. cleans that up. I Good mean, par save. The punishment for missing short is catastrophic. I mean, you, you don't yes. even advance. You're talking about taking a huge number. So you have to err on the side of throwing it firm. And McBeth playing short gets the birdie. And now that's four in a row. Watch out. Yeah, nice. It's a nice stretch to pick up. Greg also with the short play off the tee, also rewarded with a birdie. So all players completing the hole with four throws, but there were three different scores. Shortened hole eight, now a par three, 410 feet and maybe not any easier, maybe close to it, as difficult as it used to be. It was always one of the hardest holes, and it still is. You can see how tight that OB is. Uphill, blind corner, really a, a difficult angle to hit and commit to and, and get all the way up onto this green. I do like this hole, and I also missed the old hole eight. It was a very treacherous green, and uh, made made going for a huge risk-reward Versus this just is, uh, the risk is only on the tee shot. And it's not really a risk. You're just going to go for the big Anheuser shot. But it's very difficult to get to it. It's just enticing enough to, to where you, you're like, I kind of have to go for it. Yes, exactly. And that's your typical spot. Yeah. I you're gonna, like mid C2. You're going to see a lot of 45-foot looks on this hole. It's hard to get all the way there. But every once in a while, you get like a Ricky Wysocki type. Well, yeah, that's in that same shallow yeah. C2. It's not mid C2. Almost pin high, though. Yeah, almost pin high. That's what I He got the distance almost perfect, just didn't quite get the turn right. Well, it's almost like you shank it on accident to park it. Like this one might. Now, this be, looks really good. This might be the better of, of all of them. Oh, yeah. 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 See how he like hugs it and it's like, oh, what is that doing? No, parked. Ew, ew. <laughs> ew, yeah. Fantastic. Because they throw up a red flag, and he probably would be like, oh, yeah, makes sense. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, wouldn't be shocked. No. Macbeth from that range, just putting it close. Greg's kind of been all over the place so far this round. Would love to drop something like that to get things going. Well, that's one thing that's been missing from Greg's... Um, Arsenal right now, last two rounds. Ricky, oh, that's what a just pot. hearted. Is we haven't seen him make anything from circle two, really. Ricky would like to get rid of this accordion effect that he's had with the birdie par, birdie par, birdie, and just get onto a birdie streak already. Chris this, has not par. This front nine doesn't, oh wow, yeah, he has. This front nine doesn't really allow you to get on too hot of a streak. This is, I think, it's a harder front nine than the back nine. The back nine opens up a little bit in some places, and you can go on some good runs. But the front nine with holes like seven and eight and even the next round nine or the next hole nine, really tough to get a good round going on the front. Bolt nine, par three, 480 feet, slightly downhill, OB everywhere. Right side especially tight, and that rock can kind of mess you up sometimes. People get a little too aggressive on the approach. It's pretty common to see something kind of do a little speed curl around the back side of that rock, and it can be really tricky to save par from behind it. 
Gannon Burr. I played with him the last two days. He played really, really well today. You're looking at him on 18, throwing the big hyzer. The bogey you see there on his scorecard was a dead center spit out from 20 feet. Oof. So not even deserved there. And he threw this forehand beautifully. Just short of the basket. Which would get him to that 17 under mark, which we see two players up there in that same area. Cole Radolin and Anthony Barilla. No surprise there. We got a young leaderboard up at the top. Ricky riding the right side. Nice and flat. Really great shot here. No troubles of the Jeez. out of bounds at all. That is so good. You think we'll ever see someone go for the backhand roller off the ramp ace shot? Oh, I sure hope so. It's the smart play. That might be a Jomez practice round special, but look at this thing. Wow, drifting, 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 heisering. Oh, oh man. That is one of the prettier drives you will ever see on hole nine. 480. So that thing goes 500, stops on a dime, short of the rock. What a throw. It doesn't look like he's going to par anytime soon. This, this is needs a little help. bit lazy. Oh, that just didn't get the, didn't have anything. Yeah. Didn't just didn't have anything. Pop. You can get lucky sometimes on that yeah. hill side, but he hit in the wrong spot. There's high grass. If you hit in that, I, it gobbles you right I up. think they left that high grass this year on purpose to avoid that. Greg's Man, got a lot high. of height. You got to worry about this. It is flat at the top at least. He's going to need to catch that hillside. Yeah. Yes. Okay, got they enough distance. It. Early so far that Macbeth is actually going zone approach, or is that is that? I think this is a driver. A driver. And that's in bullseye. He'll save the bogey, but strange drop shot to see Macbeth have there. I mean, it's not hard to get a bogey in this hole. Don't get me wrong. But that shot just didn't have a chance. You don't normally see Macbeth that errant. Is Greg just off left? And there's a couple birdies in a row for Ricky. Now he's feeling it. Yep. You get the last two back to back. You are gaining shots yeah, on the field. Yeah, totally. You are gaining into that. We were seeing that they were all kind of hanging about four shots out of the top ten. He's two away from top ten now. He gained shots on everybody. If I were to say 46 birdies between A pool and B pool in this hole, would that surprise you? Yes. It would surprise me. That's a ton of birdies on this hole. It's the fifth most difficult hole, but my goodness, 46 people getting two on this hole. That's that's a lot. This is a very challenging hole. I feel like it's one of those holes where you're kind of just forced to go after it. There's no real totally. safe way to play it. So it's just like, okay, Send it as hard as I can at the, at the hole, and, the I, and I hope I'm, I'm safe. You know what I mean? Well, Ricky's starting to get things going here. Good front nine for him and Chris. Chris, those two bogeys, but a lot of birdies. Beautiful throws. Macbeth with the one errant shot there. But Greg kind of hanging in the mix, but uh, falling, going the other direction still a little bit. Just nine more holes for round two, and then we got our shuffle of the pools. See that where those B pool guys shake into the leaderboard. See where they can, how high they can climb. Quite a few of them are climbing pretty high right now. Thanks to the Founders Club. We'll see you for the back nine.